Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to build an electrolysis tank, but most importantly, I'm gonna be showing you how it actually works, the chemistry behind it, because I don't know about you guys, but when I was in chemistry, when I tried looking this stuff up or tried to look up any information on this, I could find how to do it, but I never could understand why it actually works, how the rust goes from rust to iron. So today I'm gonna to be covering all that. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here. I'm gonna start with identifying the cathode and the anode of our electrolysis cell. So here's our cathode. It is the rusty piece of metal that we are going to use for this experiment. And the chemical name for this is iron oxide or Fe2O3. And our anode is going to be just a steel rod, just Fe with a little bit of carbon. And that's going to be hooked up to either a a 6 or a 12 volt battery. Anywhere in between there is fine, but anything above that and it'll pretty much burn the metal you're trying to use or anything below it won't work fast enough. So next I'm going to identify the electrolyte. I chose to use Na2CO3, which is sodium carbonate. And when sodium carbonate mixes with water, it breaks down into ions. And I'll get back to why we need an electrolyte in the first place more towards the end. But next I'm going to start talking about what happens at the cathode. Okay, so two things happen at the cathode. One, when water touches the cathode, it produces hydrogen gas and two OH molecules. The second thing that happens at the cathode is that the Fe2O3, the iron rust, is reduced. It is what's known as a solid state redox reaction, meaning the iron oxide can conduct electricity and is reduced in the metal. Or in other words, the reduction reaction that happens to the iron oxide, the rust, doesn't happen in solution, it happens on the site of the rust itself. So in order for the iron to return to its normal state of being a solid metal, it needs to get rid of this extra oxygen that it has, it needs to be reduced. So that is what the electrons are doing. They basically switch places with the oxygen, but I'll get more into that later. So at the anode, water is giving its electrons to the terminal of the battery, the positive terminal, and that is what this equation looks like here. 2H2O liquid turns into O2 gas plus four hydrogen molecules, get back to that in a second, and four electrons. So those four electrons immediately go up to the positive terminal of the battery, and the hydrogen immediately mixes with carbonate ions to create water and CO2 gas. So the way I look at this whole process, the reason why we even need an electrolyte in the first place is that the battery needs to conduct electricity from the cathode to the anode so that the iron can pretty much switch places with the oxygen here. In other words, iron would continue to rust and give all of its extra electrons to surrounding oxygen in the air. But this process forces the oxygen atoms to release so that iron can return to its original state of Fe. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what that process looks like. sacrificial cathode, super rusty, 
super oxidized. You could just see all of this rust. It's all off the metal, but it's still like completely coagulated on top. So this black stuff that you see coming off, this is called magnetite. It's um, Fe304, I believe. All of the rust from the outer edge is almost completely gone. I didn't leave it in there for long enough. I left it in there for about an hour. So the method worked really well. I don't think it was left in there long enough to fully reduce all of the iron, but it reduced it to magnetite, most of it. And I don't have any kind of sponge or tool that'll get in between these creases, but there's like coagulated rust in between here. And here is what is left over. This is all the crap that came off of this piece right here. Alrighty, that was a lot grimier than I thought it was going to be, but just a couple of warnings before I finish up the video. Do not use stainless steel for your electrodes. It contains a substance known as hexavalent chromium. It is highly toxic. Just use regular steel or, or iron. And danger number two, there are going to be relatively high amounts of hydrogen gas coming from the cathode. So just make sure to do this experiment in a well-ventilated area so that concentrations of hydrogen don't get too high. But yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them down in the comments.